Good morning, guys. So I thought I might as well just get right into it about what this video is about. Um, don't really have anything specifically planned out. I'm just going to talk a little bit about just what's been going on in my life the past past year. Um, definitely went dark on YouTube for the past year. I was posting a lot of golf content. And as many of y'all know, I was a part of a, a golf content group called Regacy Golf. And it was between myself, Bryson DeChambeau, and Martin Borgmeyer. Um, last year, we were, last year, around the beginning of the year through the summer, we were filming a lot of content, just having a great time. Um, for me, I had huge hopes in Regacy and what it would do and how it could provide for you know you guys and then also myself. Um, I saw a lot of success that could come from it. And I had a lot of hope in that. And at the end of the summer last year, we decided it was kind of a collective decision that it was best to just stop doing Regency. Um, a, because Martin was from Germany and he was ha having to travel over a bunch. And um, another reason was Bryson is a professional golfer and he was traveling a bunch. And then obviously there's some other reasons, but those were kind of the main reasons and it just overall didn't make sense as a whole. Um, but yeah, that, that whole situation was kind of tough for me um, because between me, Bryson, and Martin, and then the other part of the team, like Hudson, Adam, um, even my buddy Shaler, we put a lot of time and effort into getting that thing started. And like I said, I had huge hopes in that for what it could, uh, what it could really do for us as a group and then the golf community as a whole. Um, so yeah, obviously y'all haven't seen videos from Regency in over a year now and, uh, obviously we're done, uh, still great friends with Bryson and Martin, honestly haven't seen Martin recently, uh, just cause he's been traveling a bunch between Germany and then all the long drive events, but still great friends with guys. There's nothing wrong between us. It's just we made a decision that it was time to move on to other things. And for me, that kind of left me, I'd say, in a pickle because Bryson obviously has an incredible career set up for him. And then Martin, um, great long drive professional. He's kind of got his social media stuff figured out. Um, and yeah, they just kind of have their passions figured out and, you know, Regency stopping was kind of a blessing in disguise because I, I truly wasn't that passionate about going out on the golf course and filming all this content and trying to shoot good scores. And I also felt like if I'm being completely, completely vulnerable, I didn't feel like I provided that much value in the golf space, especially whenever I was associated with people like Martin Borgmeier and Bryson DeChambeau. Martin being the longest hitter in the world right now. He won the world championship last year. And then Bryson being one of the best golfers in the world. Um, and then there was me, you know. But that, that was just something I was dealing with. Um, had nothing to do with them. Uh, but after Regency ended, I, there was a lot of self-reflecting, uh, there was a short period of time where I was just trying to figure things out and I was just trying to jump into all these areas. I started a supplement company cause I was always interested in fitness. Like my whole life, I always had a dream of being successful and I've always put it on myself to try and get there. And, um, whether that be like me studying up really hard on how to be really good at X, Y, and Z, 
or working really hard to get good at X, Y, and Z or associating me or associating myself with people that were really good in those fields. And to be honest, that's kind of what I did whenever I first started making content is I automatically got around the right people, which there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes when you get around those right people, you can become sort of reliant on them. And what I'm realizing now is that you, you can't really be reliant on anyone and you can't change who you are. Um, and that just brings up um, something that changed my life forever. And that was me after self-reflecting of who I was and who I was trying to be and like, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do all of these things and like putting all this pressure on myself, I realized that that wasn't the play. Between that and trying to um, look up to people that were quote unquote better than me in life and trying to learn from them. Um, and whenever I looked into those people, I realized that they had the same problems as me. I was dealing with this, the stresses that come into this world depression, anxiety, just overthinking and just every situation possible and just trying to find like vices and ways out. And that's when I came to the calculated decision that what I was doing was not right for me mentally. And in November of 2022, I truthfully decided to surrender everything to God. And on that night, I humbled myself before the Lord, got on my knees for the first time ever. And I've had some crazy stuff happen in my life. And I've, I, I grew up in Christianity and I knew who Jesus was and all this stuff, but it was all head knowledge for me. Um, thankfully, the seed was planted then, but in November 2022, this was the first time that I 100% fully put my faith in Jesus and believed that he is truly alive. He's not, he's not dead. He's not just a historical figure. He's alive. And I got down on my knees and prayed and told the Lord that I believe in your way more than my way and I surrender all these, all these things to you. And in that moment was the first time that I heard the voice of the Lord. And it was the craziest thing. I heard him say, get in your car and drive north. Now it sounds random, but this was the first time I had childlike faith, like what it explains in the Bible. And so I, so I went downstairs um, just walked out of Bryson's house, got in my car, and drove north. Started driving north down the Dallas North Tollway, and the Lord called me to play Christian music as I got in my car, um, which was crazy because I had never listened to Christian music voluntarily in my life, and all of a sudden, the words within the music had meaning. They had never had meaning to me before, and now all of a sudden, the words of these songs that were saying were speaking life into me. And I was like, wow, okay, like, Lord, you're showing me something. You're showing me something. Thank you, thank you. It's the first time I started giving thanks to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all this. Thank you for that. And what I realize now is it was the Lord always, or it was the Lord already changing my heart and the way I thought about things. Um, Jesus explained that in, in the Gospels that, uh, this is kind of a side note, but Jesus explained in the Gospels that he didn't come here to be served, he came here to serve. He didn't come here to judge people, he came to save people. And through that, that is the true, truest form of love that you can represent. The, the God of this universe, the, God, the creator, 
humbled himself before us, came down on earth and was beaten up and killed by his own creation so that we could ha- so that we could just accept that and believe in it fully that he is our savior. But anyway, I was feeling I started to feel that love of Jesus work within me. And I started to already see things differently. He was transforming my mind. He was ripping out like the old ways of thinking. He was redeeming me in a way. And about 20 to 30 minutes into the drive, as I was driving north down the tollway, I get hit by this wall. And it wasn't a physical wall. Kind of felt like it, though. And this wall was the Holy Spirit. And in that exact moment, all the feelings of fear, anxiety, depression, all those things that a lot of people struggle with were stripped immediately out of my life. And I was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. And normally I'm not like a, a, a very outgoing guy. Like I don't get very enthusiastic or vocal. I, I stay kind of even peel. In that moment, I just started bursting out in tears. I was weeping and I was praising the Lord, not by my own will. And I was just screaming out to the Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is all I ever want ever again. And that was true. The Lord encountered me the night that I surrendered myself to him. And if you're watching this, I want this to be a testimony to you guys. If you've been struggling and if you've been trying to rely on your own willpower, just know that Jesus calls us to cast our burdens and our problems onto him. And he will take it. He will take it. And guys, it was, it was and continues to be the greatest decision I have ever made. And from that point on, the, I mean, the next day, I come, I come into the office at Bryson's house. We were just working on some stuff with my buddy Shaler, who has been a great influence on me. Um, He's been following Jesus for quite some time now, and you can see it by his actions. I, I, I came to him and I, I said, dude, like you would not believe what happened last night. And I explained it to him. And at the time, he was the only person to understand until I got involved with his church and everybody else understood. And they're like, yeah, like that's the power of the Lord. Like, amen, let's, let's go, man. Like, that's awesome. And I had never had that sort of community, and I, I, I never even understood the just how powerful um, the presence of the Lord is. And I, I never believed it if someone told me. I just thought it was all historical in a way. And to let y'all know, I, I grew up going to a Christian private school, and did all the Christian things and this and that, but it was a very, very religious um, way of going about my life. I just had all the head knowledge, like I said before, but in November 2022, that's when Jesus truly moved into my heart. And I knew him and he knew me. And there was actually that relationship aspect to it. But when I went to Shaler's church, I, um, it's called Upper Room, it's here in Dallas. I realized that a bunch of these other people have had this similar, had similar experiences. I mean, they're different in their own ways because the Lord can, can speak to you in many different ways or move in many different ways. Um, but it was just really inspiring to see that, you know, like this is actually this is actually real. Like you can have a relationship with the Lord. And the reason I'm making this video is because the Lord is calling me to use the platform that he gave me to actually do something that has meaning. And earlier I was speaking about going and playing golf and it just didn't feel fulfilling. It wasn't fulfilling to me. And I'm not saying golf is a bad sport or anything, or like doing golf is bad. Um, But 
but for me there is always that emptiness feeling like what is the what is the point of this like what's the purpose of life and I just want to come to you guys and tell you that the purpose of life is to know Jesus because he is our creator and you know for me personally I thought like you know I'll just wait I'll just wait to like really accept him and do the right things and this and that and now what I've realized is it's not up to my own willpower um and also it's not it's not a burden to follow Jesus it's not a it's not a hassle it's the greatest opportunity you could ever have it's the greatest gift you could ever receive because Jesus is your creator and he's my creator and he literally will pave a path for you so that you don't have to do it because our own path is the highway to hell. And it talks about in uh, Matthew, I believe, it talks about in one of the Gospels how uh, you can only enter heaven through the narrow gate and the narrow gate is Jesus. So if you put your full trust in him and actually truly believe in him, the Holy Spirit will fall upon you and he will lead you to the place that you're supposed to be. Now, yes, you have to be obedient, but there will always be a burning desire in your heart to chase after the things of, of the spirit and not of the flesh because the flesh leads you down a, a path to, to evil and wickedness where the spirit leads you to the fullness of living and it leads you to life and it leads you to the light. And that's what I've been experiencing. And it's just been incredible seeing the way the Lord can transform your mind, can transform your, your heart and can like purify you. You know, literally a, a year ago and like before that, I was falling into all the things of the world, like just all the casual things like hookup culture, going out partying, this and that. and at the time it didn't feel fulfilling and it's just like something you like like chasing things after the world is the best way I can explain it is like a bottomless pit you get like little hits of uh you get little dopamine hits here and there but you just continue to fall and there's it feels like there's no way out at a certain point but what I've seen from myself and so many others as of recent and yeah, other people's testimonies is that you can never be too far gone to be pulled out of, out of that bottomless pit and saved by the love and mercy and grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And yeah, I just want y'all to know the love of Jesus. And like I said, if you feel like you're just in a rut and you've been relying on yourself too much. Maybe this is a sign from the Lord that it's your time to just give it to him and just fully, fully trust in him. And I know that sounds cliche. And if you go to church all the time and you hear them say that, it just sounds like a repetitive thing. But the first time that I ever did it, I encountered the Lord. The Bible says, or Jesus says, specifically, that if you seek me, you will find me. So that's a promise. And I encourage you guys to, to find the one true living God. And that is, that is Jesus. Um, I found him and the amount of joy that he has brought into my life has been significant. Um, just listening to him, talking with him, being obedient to him, he just continues to bless me a hundredfold. And I can't help but share with you guys what he has given to me. And I just wanted to come on here and say, like, my content is not going to be the same as it was. It's going to be, it's going to be truly me. Um, and, and who am I? Well, I, I finally truly know who I am and my identity lies in Christ, in Christ alone, because he is my creator. And 
I'm just so thankful that the Lord just continued to knock. And I'm really thankful that he was so merciful and so patient with me to, to, to finally open the door. And there's, there's nobody I'd rather want to live this life for and live it with than, than Jesus. So the content's definitely going to be a little bit different now. Um, I'm thinking just literally more raw content like this. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I'm just going to take you guys through my day-to-day -day life, and I feel like this way I can actually get consistent because I, I just didn't have that passion of going out there and trying to shoot a good score on 18 holes every day. So I hope you guys... Just enjoy this raw vlog type content and yeah, we'll see where this see where this takes us. Alright, I'm switching my, to my other camera that I just got. Got a, like a little pocket size vlog camera because it'll allow me to just make content anywhere. Um, the camera I was using before was the Sony A7S III, which is what I just shot on for that little bit. Um, <clears throat> But it's just really big, so I can't really like just whip out a camera and uh, out of my pocket and just get recording. So, yeah, I think this will be part of the trick to just being really consistent on this vlog channel. Um, I tried filming a little bit yesterday, but I had the settings completely wrong. Um, so hopefully this looks better because yesterday it was super grainy. What'd you get there? What is that that you got there? Do you know how to work that? Yeah. Show me. Boom. So I'm assuming all that's for me. We're gonna start you off with this little piece. It's really little. Dude, that looks gas. Okay guys, I'm not gonna lie. Ever since uh, moving out and living by myself, this is the best lunch I've ever had and it's simple. So that just shows that I don't do it right. I am so tired. Like the past week, I feel like I've slept an average of five hours a night. So before going to the gym, I'm gonna try taking a quick little nap and that could either go really well or really bad. Cause sometimes whenever you take a nap, you just wake up even more tired. But I feel like I really need it, so. I scratched what I said about the nap. My buddy Adam just hit me up and said he was at Starbucks. So I was like, oh, you know, I'll just come swoop by and get a coffee instead. Cool. Yeah, my message is sick. What'd you? Oh, <laughs> oh like, not a good start. Not a good sign. Bad omen. Oh, I got my bad shoulder, too. Oh, oh you eat? Yeah, I mean, I got myself a chocolate croissant, which is I normally get from my normal, my regulars. No, that's that's probably for me actually. Today is Eric, uh, Andy's 25th anniversary for working here. I congratulated him, and he plays guitar. Wait, actually? Yeah, yeah. The dude's worked there for 25, 25 years. 25 years. He's from South Texas. He moved here because he was an artist. Uh, he did the quote thing. So I don't know why people do that. Why do people do that? Because they don't mean it. Uh, uh, what? Uh, 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 why, why don't you mean it? I wanted to drink this so bad the whole time. Dude, doesn't it, it look so, so good? good. Why does it look so good? Dude, and there's like I appreciate that. There's like, no problem. There's like I mean, 35 like middle school girls in there. And, it's, <laughs> and I was like, yo, can I get a drink? <laughs> and guess what? They're all ordering the same thing that I'm ordering. <laughs> it's not for me. Like, it's for okay? I, don't, I do triple shot espresso. Hey, no, I got sugar. No, sometimes I do sugar. But usually I don't. <laughs> No, no creams. Oh, I just go straight black, like always. So I just want to say that it's over between us. Um, no hard feelings. We can still be friends. Whatever you want to do. But I, I decided I'd just rather send you a voice message to break up with you instead of talk to you in real life because I'm insecure. You knew that. <laughs> I'm gonna get myself a 24 to what is it, 24 to 70. 24 to 70. 24 to 70 for my new phone. Because I think you'll be able to do like a lot with that, honestly. Yeah. Hey, and if you ever need a 16 to 35, like, you know, you got the plug. Wait, did you call, you called in, right? No. 
<laughs> you were supposed to do I that. I feel like calling anybody. I'm not waiting online. There's 87 Best Buys in the area. <laughs> they had it last time I was here, so they better have it. If they don't. Wait, they didn't have it. Did they? Did they? No, they did. I think Are you I'm sure? I'm itching my nuts right now. Okay, here we go. That's good. <laughs> I punch my dick. No, <laughs> down score. No, this is not Scorpio. This is freaking the blue zone. You just get destroyed. I mean, punch it. That's real life. Oh, oh baby. Are you opening it? New Sony G, new Sony G Master. 24 to 70. Gotta love the packaging. We'll never use it. Turn the air conditioning on, please. God, I'm sweating. No, same. Yeah. Oh, baby. Look at that. Oh. Let's see how smooth it is. Oh, dude, that will literally complete so my lens collection. <laughs> Wait, this guy gonna go? Good. Cool. Inspired by the botanical gardens at UCLA, so I used to live in LA for like six, seven years, and I would kick it at the botans. So I called it. Um, so you know, meditate, have some peace and quiet. It's a beautiful spot. So if you're ever in LA or you live in LA, go check it out. It's an amazing spot. Pretty cool. Sold it for a pretty penny. I'm going to give you the exact amount. Ding! All right, but let's just say 10,000 times 10. Okay, let's get the idea. Obviously, I'm not a vlog and now I am. Yeah, but I will be now I am at the same time. Will be, and now I am at the same time. Yep. <laughs> am I looking at the camera? Yeah. Cool, I haven't showered yet. I probably got the crusties in there. The whole goal with today <laughs> is to make this oversized shirt no longer look like an oversized Yeah, what? Shirt. Yeah. What is this? Yeah, What's going on right there?